All right, on today's video, it's all about the doubles patterns of play. So Todd and I have been out here in the desert for about a week and we've been watching a ton of doubles. And what we notice is that sometimes they're playing the patterns correctly and sometimes they're not. And we're gonna show you how to play all of these doubles patterns to keep your advantage in the point. In future videos, we're gonna break each one of these patterns of play down. But the first one today is the poach. We're gonna go through all seven patterns of play. The poach is important because we're not cutting across the court enough. As a volleyer, my job is to be extremely aggressive on the court to help my partner at the baseline out. And what we do on the poach is we learn where to hit the poach. So the first, uh, the first principle to the poach is if I go to cut across this court, I have to hit the direction that I am moving. So if I'm moving across from this ad side, across to the deuce side, I need to hit somewhere that direction, somewhere towards that ad side of the court across from me. If I go back behind myself, if I hit that poach and I come back here like this, now I've got to come back and cover so I don't get past. And that's a huge, uh, that's a huge thing in itself to learn. The second is, if I'm going to hit the direction that I'm moving, where can I hit the ball? And there's a few areas. If I take this ball and I hit this ball up the center of the court, I'm not exactly sure where the response from my opponent is going to go. They may hit it over here. They may hit it here. They may hit it at me. They may go over my head. But as I start to go off with the ball or learn to poach to the alley, so I get here like this and I cut that ball and I move across and I hit it to the alley, I know where the next ball is going to go. It's going to stay somewhere on this side of the court. And that's because uh, the ball, when it goes off to the alley, it starts to get behind somebody. So they have to end up, they end up coming in here and they try to hook the ball back. And because that happens, they can't go back cross court. So now I'm playing a ball to the side there. I know where my response is. That is the first pattern of play. All right, the next pattern of play is where to hit your volleys when you're playing doubles and you're at the net and where to move after you hit that volley. The thing that you want to remember is if you get a tough lower volley down here when I'm volleying back to that base center, I want to keep that ball as far away from this net player as I can. I do not want to be setting that player up with this low volley and popping it up so they can crush it. I want to keep it out in front and I want to hold my ground keeping my feet moving. Now, if that player pops up a high floater or a ball that's a little bit up here that's a little more juicy now I want to attack that net player I want to hit it right at them because they're not going to have time to react and they're not going to have time to get ready for that shot so as I take that high ball at the net player over here now I'm going to move over here and play more in the middle covering this shot down the center and hopefully they don't get it back but if they do I'll be right here in the middle waiting for it the next doubles pattern of play is for the baseline player and maybe uh, I've chose to be back here maybe I got stuck back here but in general, if I'm in this area right here hitting forehands, I need to take this ball cross court. But as things start to move, as the ball starts to move side to side, some patterns change. And the pattern that we're going to talk about is if my opponent hits a sharp angle and I have to move out here towards the alley, towards the green, when that happens, I'm no longer going to go back cross court. And the reason why I'm not going to go cross court is because if I'm way out here and I hit that ball far cross court, my partner has to go follow the ball. And then it's up to me to be able to get back to the center in time or back to my position in time. And if I'm running committed this way, my opponent may go back behind me again and get me in trouble. Or I may not get back to the center in time and I won't be able to make that shot. So when I get pulled way out here like this, I'm gonna take this ball, I'm gonna gun it in towards that net person and I'm gonna have my player come across the court so they're gonna get the next volley. And as you get pulled out here, when you hit this angle towards that net person, the ball is going back into the tennis court. And because it's going back into the tennis court at that net player, that forces them to return a ball through the center of the court where my partner is standing ready to crunch a volley. All right, the next pattern of play is a play you can use on a regular ball that's deep and you're just playing from the baseline rallying cross court. We talked about when you get pulled off into the green that you want to play that ball down the line. And the reason is, is that your partner is going to follow you as you get pulled off the court. But what if I get a regular ball from here and I want to go down the line? The key is I need to have a sign to give to my partner so that they know I'm going down the line and that they can cover the middle. And what I want to say to my partner as I'm hitting that ball down the line is I want to say middle. And that's their sign to know 
to shift to the center of the court. They know I'm going to nail it at the net player, and they're going to be ready for that volley coming at them because that ball, if they return it, is going to come back through the center, and I want my partner there ready to pick off the volley. The thing to remember is some teams might complain that you're yelling or talking during the point. You're allowed to talk and communicate with your partner as long as the ball is on your side of the court. Once the ball passes the other side of the court, it could be considered a hindrance. So use this play to confuse your opponents and to play the ball down the line on a regular forehand ground stroke. So in this pattern of play, it involves uh, two players up in net. So I'm up at net, my partner's up at net as well. And our opponents launch a lob uh, in desperation way up into the air and when that happens I'm gonna choose to bounce the ball because they've launched that ball really high up into the air they know they're in trouble they've probably both gone all the way to the baseline at this point point. and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce that ball and I'm gonna tell my partner down middle or I may just say up middle and my partner will go right to the center of the court and they're gonna get down Get down like this and they're gonna get low because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce that ball and I'm gonna come in here and smash that overhead directly down the center of the court once I smash it down the center of the court my partner who's down at the net is gonna pop up and get ready to put away a volley the reason why this pattern works is because if I can hit my overhead with some power typically almost always the ball will be delivered back the way that it came from so when you hit a really strong shot, the opponent tries to get that ball back and it comes back the same direction. It doesn't change direction. And because of that, we're gonna take advantage of that. So I'm smashing that ball down there, my partner's standing up, and then they're putting away the very next ball. All right, the next pattern of play is when I get lobbed against two back, but now I'm taking that ball out of the air. If I'm over here in the ad court taking that ball out of the air, I'm going to communicate to my partner. I'm going to say, I got it, it's mine, and I'm going to say up so they know to move up, and I'm going to play that ball cross court in front of my partner. I'm setting them up to get the next ball right on top of the net if the ball comes back, and I'm also putting myself right into the center of the court in case they get that ball back. I'm cutting the angle off here. So this is a great play. I want to play it in front of my partner and set them up. If I put the ball back to the deuce court, I'm out of position and I'm not getting ready for the next ball. Now, if my opponents are playing one up, one back, it's the same as the high ball, low ball. If I have a really tough deep overhead and I'm going back, I might just slice that ball back to the deep player and keep it away from the net player. But if the ball's anywhere where I can get set under the ball and rip it hard, I'm gonna crush it right at the net player because they won't have time to react and get that ball back. All right, the final play is if my partner gets lobbed, what you're gonna do uh, when they successfully get lobbed. So they're gonna be yelling switch, and as they yell switch, I gotta get myself across this court. So I'm running across the court, and what my partner's gonna do is they're gonna go right to the center of the court. They're not gonna do a full switch, and they're not gonna do that because they're relying on me to hit the ball in front of myself or down the line. So when I get over here, I'm gonna take this ball and I'm gonna smack it down the line. My partner's in the center ready to get the ball if it goes through the middle. And then if it doesn't go through the middle, it's coming back at me and I'll hit that ball down there again to get my partner involved. That is the last pattern of play. All right, so now you have seven patterns of play while the point is going on. And in our next coming videos, we're gonna break each one of those down. We're gonna have players on the court. You're gonna see exactly how all that plays out. But remember, these are the patterns. Write them down, memorize them. That way, when you see them in our next videos, you're going to know what we're talking about.